Right before we jump into this video, if you'd like to take better pictures in only 11 days, I created a free mini video course that you can download right now at fronosphoto.com slash 11 days. Now let's get into the unboxing. Jared Poland, Fronos Photo. Dot com and welcome to the Frodo store for an unboxing sniff test and mini review of this Tamron 18 to 400 3.5 to 6.3 VC lens. Now let's take it out of the box and see what we have and see who it's for. So let's do this. You've got a piece of paper. This has your serial number on it. That's good to remind you to put it into your My Gear Vault. You've got some paperwork, which you'll never read. And then you've got the lens inside some cardboard. So let's pop it out of here. Come on, pop out. Okay, there's that, there's that. And here is the lens. Now it doesn't feel as light as I expected, but it also doesn't feel like it's the best built in the world. And you've got to understand that when you get to these super mega zooms. This is 18 to 400. That means it's a 28 to 640 on a Canon camera, and it's a 27 to 600 equivalent on the Nikon, because when you're on Nikon, you multiply by 1.5 for those crop sensor cameras, and on Canon, it's 1.6. So it's gonna give you a nice wide angle to get those group shots, and it's gonna give you the nice ability to reach out and grab an image far away. Now it also comes with a lens hood. I always recommend that you leave the lens hood on the outside like this, so that it could cut down on any stray light that may interfere with your images. Now I took this out to the zoo because that's a great place to do test shots. I was able to show what 18 millimeters would look like when shooting the lemurs indoors and then 400. I reached out and I grabbed that lemur's eyeball because I was like, wow, 18 is insane because it's ultra wide. And then to be able in one lens to reach out to 400, is amazing. The same thing happened when I photographed the lions outdoors. Uh, you could see the wide angle shot and be like, oh wow, that's pretty bad because you can see all the netting and fencing, but then I'm able to zoom in and shoot through the netting and fencing and get a nice shot of the lions. And the same thing happens when you photograph the bald eagles. It's like the fence just disappears. Now what you have to remember with a lens that is variable aperture from 3.5 at 18, which means that's gonna let in the most amount of light when you're wider, as you zoom in, you're cutting down on the amount of light that you're letting in to the camera. So what happens is when you shoot indoors, your ISO is gonna to have to go up to compensate for that 6.3 aperture, meaning you may see some more noise and grain. So if you're leaving the camera in full auto, it's gonna really boost that ISO. So just be aware when you're indoors, it's gonna be much harder to get crisper and cleaner images because most of the time, you're not gonna have enough light inside. But what's cool about this lens is that it has VC, vibration compensation, meaning it's gonna counteract your movements. Now it's not the best VC in the world. That comes in the two, three, four, six thousand dollars lenses, you'll find the best VC. This is fine. It's okay. I leave it on all the time when I'm shooting with this lens because I want to counteract any movement that I have or counteract movement if I'm shooting at a slower shutter speed. But a lot of people want one lens to rule them all. They want one wide angle to telephoto zoom to travel the world with. And with that comes responsibility. And the responsibility is basically a trade-off, that you're not gonna get the greatest quality in the world when you have a super mega zoom. But I was surprised with the colors and tones I was able to pull out of the RAW files. It was also sharper than I expected. I didn't expect it to be as sharp as it was when I zoomed in on the computer. Now I did notice at the wide angle at 18, there's some distortion around the edges, but that's to be expected in a mega zoom. And then all the way zoomed out at 400, I saw a little bit of vignette going on at the corners. But again, that's expected. You're, you're not gonna get the best of the best in mega zooms. But if you're looking for one lens to travel the world with, that's gonna give you the wide angle shot of say, the Vatican, and then the tight shot of the Pope up in his pulpit thing, then you're gonna be able to reach out and grab him and get the wide shots. So you can tell a nice story with it. Now let's give it a sniffy McSnifferson and see what it smells like. <sighs> yeah, it smells like animal feed. 
Maybe because I was rolling around at the zoo with it. But hey, let's see how it does in the wind tunnel test next. Not bad because it's super narrow and super slim. The air tends to just flow around it. And I also want to remind you that you can download the sample raw files so that you can look at them for yourself to determine if this is the right choice for you. And lastly, how is it when it comes to video? Because these days a lot of people want to shoot video as well as stills. It's going to be all right. It's going to give you the ability to get your wides and be stabled with your VCs and also zoom in a little bit, but it's not going to be the best focusing to track that subject running around the soccer field. Though, if you're shooting soccer and your kids are playing, it will be good for reaching out and getting those tight shots of action. But understand at 6.3, the background is going to probably be in focus. So if somebody's on the sideline picking their nose and the kids halfway across the field, they both may be in focus. But again, it's that trade off because after the game, you're able to get that wide angle team shot because you can shoot at 18 millimeters. So again, is this worth 650 bucks? Well, that's for you to determine. That's if you want one lens to take around and you understand the trade-off that's happening in terms of quality in exchange for the ability to have a mega zoom. But at the end of the day for 650 bucks, how is this lens? It's not bad, but just understand if you're an amateur and you're just somebody who wants a mega zoom to travel around with, it could be a really good option for you. If you're somebody who's growing as a photographer, I wouldn't put my 650 bucks into something like this. I would consider multiple lenses from Tamron like a 24 to 70 or a 17 to 55 to 8 and a 70 to 200 to 8. You're going to spend more money but you're gonna enjoy it more into the future. So that's it guys, that's an unboxing and sniff test here from the Frodo store. Let me know what you think down below. Is this lens for you? Is it not for you? Why or why not? And thank you very much for watching. Jared Poland, froknowsphoto.com. See ya.